Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll show you how to easily farm auto loaders, smart mesh, and derelict explosives in the cycle frontier. These three items are highly sought after for their late wipe benefits and can sometimes be difficult for newer players to acquire. In this guide, I'll show you exactly where to look along with some great routes for you to quickly loot and get out. First, let's talk about why these items are so coveted. The auto loader is used to craft the purple armor penetration mod for all weapon types, which is the highest PVP damage mod in the game. Derelict explosives are commonly used to craft the orbital cannon beacon, which is used to open the dungeon. And last but not least, smart mesh. Smart mesh is used to craft the Korolev drill, suppressors, purple armor, and a purple backpack. Now let's take a look at exactly where all three of these spawn. The spawns for every item in the game are directly related to two things, the danger levels or tier level and the type of container. While you can find smart mesh and auto loaders in the crash ship on Bright Sands, it's much more rare and not really an effective way of farming them if that's what you're looking to do. That said, Crescent Falls is by far the best place to get these three items. So let's take a quick look at the map and which areas you wanna be focusing on. So here we have a map of Crescent Falls, but before we go into any farming routes, I wanna show you another version of Crescent Falls that shows the danger or tier levels. Understanding which areas have high danger versus very high danger is important to know when farming these items. All of the areas you see in blue are high danger areas or tier three. Purple is very high danger, tier four, and pink is extreme danger, tier five. As you can see, areas like Favela, Oasis, and Pinnacle Labs have extreme danger, and other key points of interest like Lakeside Building, Greens Prospect, and Geothermal Plant are very high danger. Like I said earlier, it's important to know the danger levels to help you understand what loot can be found there. Which leads me to start with talking about Smart Mesh. Each Smart Mesh weighs 10 and is the easiest of the three items to find because it can be found in high danger areas inside dumpsters, industrial crates, and as loose loot. Since the entire map of Crescent Falls is high danger or above, this means that you can find Smart Mesh in any dumpster or industrial crate that you see on the map, and there are a ton of them. Any of the points of interest that I talked about earlier, or you can see on the map, are going to have these two types of containers, and they also have that chance of getting Smart Mesh. Which leads me to the other two items, Auto Loaders and Derelict Explosives. We're gonna talk about routes that include these two items because they can only be found in very high danger areas. First, let's take a look at derelict explosives. They weigh five, and as I said, restricted to very high danger areas. However, they are only found in dumpsters and loose loot. Auto loaders weigh six, and they only spawn in very high danger areas as well, inside of industrial crates or as loose loot. All three of these items can be found in a combination of industrial crates, dumpsters, and loose loot. You see in the pattern here? So we know what containers we're looking for and we know we want very high danger areas to farm in. So now let's dive into my favorite spots to run through and loot. So I'm bringing back the map and here we are. So I wanna talk about Favela first. Favela has uh, some really, really good loot in it and there are a ton of dumpsters and industrial crates in it. But it is also insanely contested because of the community key room, which has a double weapon crate as well as the loose house key which has another weapon crate. So that's three weapon crates in an area of extreme danger. It makes it a really, really hotly contested area. It's not normally my go-to spot unless I get like the fallen tree spawn or the geothermal spawn. I might just run right to it and see what's up. Another spot that I don't typically hit is Green's Prospect. Even though there are quite a few industrial crates and dumpsters in that area, there is also just a ton of player activity. There's a lot of quests that go on in that area and it's typically a war zone. So I like to generally skip that spot because of the low survivability. Now I wanna dive into my favorite spots and starting with Lakeside Building and just south of Lakeside Building. So just south of Lakeside Building is a tier three area and it's only gonna have smart mesh, but there is an insane cluster of industrial crates and dumpsters in that spot. And you definitely need to be hitting this area on your run. And typically, Lakeside is gonna be somewhat close to a lot of different evacs. So you might, you're always gonna have an opportunity to hit this in almost every situation. My next favorite spot is Oasis and the South Pinnacle area. And these, these two spots, there's a bunch of different areas that you can go to here. Four specifically, they're gonna have some good opportunities to get some of these items. You can also sneak into Starport Warehouse. There is some good spots in there, including loose loot on the shelves. You can find auto loaders and stuff. It is a pretty highly contested area. Sometimes I like to just sneak around the outside and hit a couple of the dumpsters, but it's really up to you on how much risk you wanna put into the run. 
So those are my favorite areas on the map. Now I do want to make sure that you guys have like a direct visual on what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to walk through the lakeside run and then walk through Oasis just so you guys can see it in action. So this is going to be kind of a longer portion here of this video as we go through all these routes, but let's get started. Okay, first up lakeside building. I'm coming in from the south side here and it's kind of like right below the building on the map, north of geothermal plant. And you're gonna start by seeing a ton of the crates we're looking for. That's the dumpster crate, got a few there. There's also loose loot all over the place on top of these boxes. And that's what an industrial crate looks like. And you're just gonna run through and hit everything as quickly as possible. And as you can see, I'm just doing this on a knife run. You know, you can do that if you're down and or you don't wanna risk anything. You just wanna just take a net win and get some smart mash or get some auto loaders or derelict explosives, just knife run it. If you die, it's no big deal. Um, and you've got some in your safe pockets, hopefully, if you found some. But honestly, it's almost more rare to not find a smart mesh in this particular area. Now this is just south of the lakeside building. You can see it to the left there, that big wall. That's, the, that's kind of the threshold of the building. And south of that is in fact only tier three, meaning that all these industrial crates that we're looting can only have smart mesh. They cannot have derelict explosive or auto loaders because it is not a very high danger area. But we're flying through, obviously we're on a knife run, so I'm not engaging anything. And I'm just hitting every single one of the containers in the area and trying my best not to get destroyed by AI. Which is gonna happen, by the way. So, you know, especially if you're new to running this map, you've really gotta learn how to control your stamina and you'll start to learn where all the, the monsters are and it'll make it a lot easier for you to dodge and evade as necessary. And I'm sure we're all aware Jeff is a real big pain in the butt and there are going to be a lot of marauders on these runs. So you're just going to have to continue to manage that stam and uh, wait for him to kind of roar at you and then run away and just get out of sight of his melee distance. Now we've gone up the stairs. Now we're actually in Lakeside Building. You can see the pop up there saying very high danger. So now any dumpster or industrial crate that I hit in these areas or the loose loot for that matter can have derelict explosives and auto loaders. And we're just gonna fly through this entire area. Once again, there's like at least three marauders that can be in these areas. So once again, you're just kind of playing hide and seek with these things. And there are a few other like lootable objects that you can hit in these areas. You know, I, in this particular run, I don't think I hit every single one. Um, we were low on meds and this is a knife run. So it wasn't like, you know, worth the risk necessarily to hit some of them. But just keep looking around. There's a lot of loose loot in this particular, these four spawns here I've seen it all the time. Um, feel free to grab that print resin. I think I had like 80 at the time. I just like left it, but print resin is really strong and one of the highest selling green items per weight that you can have. So definitely make sure you're grabbing those print resins. And there is an insane amount of print resin in this run later on as well. Got a couple more dumpsters up top. We've already found a couple smart mesh. So we're big chilling. Uh, we're gonna go around the back here and just dip out and de-aggro the Jeff out the back. And now we're gonna head to Oasis. And here we are, Oasis, kind of the northeast portion of the map. I'm actually gonna take this cave in. This cave is kind of on the northern side. There's a few ways in. You can come in coming from Starport Warehouse. You can come in from Hayfields and past the waterfall. Um, there's also a jump up straight ahead to my left there um, that you can take as well from one of the buildings. There's a lot of different ways to get into this spot, but the Oasis, you can really notice you've got this kind of circular water pattern around it and there's this huge tree in the middle. And I am right along the tree in the middle and I'm gonna hit a spot here. Now this is one of the more challenging spots. You've got a couple crates here and uh, there's another smart mesh, cha-ching. Um, you've also got a barrel and a few other things, but again, we're on a knife run here. So we kind of bailed on a few things, especially after we got hit there. And then we're gonna rotate around the tree to the other side and we've got some more print resin and a smart mesh there as well. And we're gonna hit just these uh, boxes here. Now, if you take damage or if you're on a knife run, there is a green healing plant here that you can use to your advantage and get yourself healed back up as we rotate to the next spot. So we're all healed up and I'm gonna take this little shortcut here. I like doing this a lot actually when rotating from this spot of Oasis to the next spot. It's getting up on this huge vine right here and moving along this way. I just feel like 
you're going to get a little bit less creature aggro from down below because there is a lot that can spawn, a lot of striders that can spawn in that water to my right there. And we're also going to get a decent look at what's going on here. And in this case, it looks like we're clear and good to run straight at it. And there's a bunch of crates that we want to hit here. And we're going to go as fast as possible because we do have Jeff uh, following us. We've got some striders. Now, one thing I'll note is that you can get on the roof of this building um, if you get in trouble. So make sure that you guys know that. You can use the roof as kind of like a, you can't de-aggro from it, but you can get your bearings. Um, if you have too many creatures, you know, wailing down on you, just get on those rocks on the right there and just jump to the left onto the roof. Now there were four yellow civilian lockers on the inside that we did not hit. There was just a little too much heat uh, for me there, but you can hit those. A lot of print resin, textiles, uh, fusion batteries, things like that, shard slicers. We are going to go up to the next spot, which is this yellow fence in area up here. And you want to look down into the left right there, as well as by the boxes that I had peeked at uh, just between the wire fence. So now we're going to go north of that position, just where that wire fence was in that little box. And we're going to go north in this direction and we're going to run past all the mobs. And we're going to get up to this kind of the top of this river uh, up here. There's a structure with a waterfall here. And you're going to have three more additional crates that you can loot for some goodies. And we're going to get a derelict explosive in here and uh, a couple other nice things. You can just kind of, once again, dodge everything if you need to. So that pretty much wraps up my two favorite areas to farm for smart mesh, derelict explosives, and auto loaders. And again, you can kind of weave in some favela if you want to, if you want to risk it at Green's Prospect, knock yourself out, or Starport, whatever, it all works. And you can kind of hit this in any direction you want. If you're coming from the pumpkin fields and you want to rotate through the water and hit this one first and go out through Oasis and then to Lakeside, go for it. Kind of all depends on your spawns and all depends on where your evacs are. But Oasis and Lakeside are my two go-tos uh, for finding those items. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope the video helped you out. If you're looking for more Cycle Frontier content, then make sure to drop a sub and I'll catch you in the next one.